I've made a habit tracker in the past on this channel. In fact, it's one of my best performing videos. In today's video, what I want to do is take that classic checkbox habit tracker database and I want to give it a little bit of an upgrade. That upgrade is going to consist of the ability to skip habits. So for example, if you have six different habits you want to complete every single day, but on the weekends, you don't really need to complete habits five and six. What we're gonna be able to do with a Notion formula is take that progress bar at the end of the database for all of the habits completed, and we're gonna put into account those habits that you want to skip. In the second half of this video, what I wanna do is create something like an analytics database. And what this is gonna do is allow you to see real-time progress of the average habits completed in a given month as the month progresses. So let's just get right into the video. This is a classic habit tracker. We have habits one through six and they're all check boxes. We also have a star rating, which is acting as the progress bar. These golden stars indicate that it is at 100%. Otherwise it will show us white stars and a percentage. I also have a weekday formula that takes the date of this particular entry and just formats it to show us the weekday. This is something that if you are using my 2021 planner, I already have in there, which by the way, for something like a habit tracker, this is something I found a lot in the comments in my first video was, I don't want to write the day every single day in the name column. I do have a pre-filled database that you can download as well down below or create your own. I'll leave a link to the video where I show you how to do that. So that will um, relieve you of that headache. This month column here, we're gonna ignore that for now and revisit it in the second half of this video when we create this analytics database up here. In this scenario, we have six different habits. We want to find the progress for the habits completed. To do that, if you have not seen my original video, to find the percentage of a series of checkboxes, you're gonna use the unary plus function. I don't believe I actually did use this in the first video because this was a long time ago. I don't even think I knew about this function, but this is pretty much what you're gonna do. You're gonna say unary plus property habit one, plus, and I'm just gonna copy this, habit two, plus habit three, wrote that incorrectly, I believe it's unary plus, with the P capitalized. And just do it all the way down the line, and then you just kinda keep going. So we have six here, I'm going to type out six, habit three, four, five, and six, and this will show us how many checkboxes are ticked in the row. Essentially to find the percentage or the progress, you're just gonna divide all of this, so I'm just gonna isolate it by the total number of habits you have. In this case, it is six, right? Pretty much basic math here. And then what you can do is go to this one, two, three button and go to percent. This is a crazy number. You can round it out, of course. Say round 100 times all of this here put a parentheses after six, and then divide the whole thing by 100. And this will give you a much cleaner number. So that's the classic way to find this progress. We're going to take it a step further. We are going to incorporate not only a star rating, but also we're going to incorporate this skip column. Now, before doing that, let's actually look at a property called progress, because I do wanna use this Let's kind of break all of this up for those who aren't really familiar with formulas. We're pretty much to assume that if I'm skipping habits one and three, that I'm not gonna check them off on this day. So assuming that we only have habits two, four, five, and six checked off, this means this should be 100% completion for the day. What we're gonna do is the same thing we did before with unary plus function plus you know what, it's bothering me that it is a percentage. Sorry, okay. And then plus habit two. If you are creating this from scratch with me um, and you haven't filled out your habits yet, or maybe you have, I would actually start with this very simple, like habit one, habit two, habit three, habit four, when you're creating the formula first, because it's just a lot easier to deal with and then go ahead and rename those columns after and all of this will update. So that stays the same, let's isolate it and we're gonna divide it by the total amount. This is where things change. And actually let's go over to that test 
formula to work on the second half. So we're dividing it by not by six, but by four because we're skipping two habits. Firstly, I wanna see how many tags are populated inside of skip. That's pretty much all we have to know. So what I wanna use is the replace function. And I'm gonna say replace everything within skip. That is not, I believe this is how you do it. Carrot comma, close this in with an empty space. And I believe it is replace all. I want to find the length of the commas because really what's going on here is all of your tags within skip are divided by a comma. So if I were to convert skip to a text, it would say habit one comma habit three. Let's find the length of all commas here and then just add one. Now there's a little bit of an issue here because yes, this does have two uh, tags inside and this one does have one and these two have one but it's saying all the rest also have one So I just want to create a little bit of an if statement around this And don't worry if you're a little bit confused I do have all the formulas down below for you to copy as well inside of that page So I'm just gonna say if in property skip only the case of this being not empty so having something in it do I want this to execute. Otherwise, just give me a zero. And now we have zeros for everything that's not populated. I could also make this just an empty cell instead of a zero by saying two number and two quotes within the parentheses. Either way works. All of the habits available, which is six in this instance, for you it may be more, it may be less, so you can go ahead and adjust for yourself. I'm gonna say six minus all of this here. So now what we're getting is that four instead of a six. So let's copy all of this and say isolate inside of progress, all these unary plus functions, and then divide by that new piece of formula we made. So now you see the progress is 100% or a one. If I change this to percent, you can see it says 100%. We can round all of this out now go round 100 times, oops, 100 times, and then close it out, and then divide by 100 at the end. I'm actually going to keep this column as is. I wanna keep it as a number, because when we go to connect to this analytics database up here, we need it to be a number. But for the sake of aesthetics, let's go on to the star rating column and translate this into a 10 star rating. So for the star rating, what I wanna do is take that progress actually. So I wanna actually show that again. We're gonna steal this progress formula. And what I'm gonna do is paste it in here for now. And I'm gonna go up to the top here. I have some icons for you guys to copy. Um, I have the plane icons. So this is 10 stars. I really like these stars a lot better than the golden ones, but we're going to use the golden ones whenever we're at 100%. So let's first copy the white ones, go back to the star rating. Now I'm going to use the slice function at the beginning of this here. Close it out. In quotes, put those 10 stars inside. Comma, zero, comma, 10. Take all of this here, so just copy it. What I'm gonna say is 10 multiplied by all of that formula we made for progress. And that will pretty much give you a star rating progress bar, which is really cool. You can see 100%, it's 10 stars. We are gonna change that to golden. What I'm gonna do is add the progress number at the end. So now that we're using a text property with these icons, what I'm gonna do is just use the format function to wrap around our progress property. Since in this case, we are still keeping this progress here, I'm just gonna grab it. So property, progress. I'm gonna put a space here. So it is coming up as not that 100%, but one. That's because in progress, that's what the actual number was before we translated it into a percentage. So I had to mess with this a little bit inside of the format. I'm just gonna say times 100 and then plus a percentage sign. You guys can take a look at that if you'd like. Now from here, let's make an if condition for those golden stars. If the progress column, if this equals one, then show me the golden stars. I 
don't know if I want to put the 100% at the end of this because it's already assumed. And then just close it out at the end. And yeah, you can take a look at that as well. We're just saying if the progress is 1 or 100%, have the golden stars. If not, so the false condition is what we made before. And that's pretty much how that looks. But before we go into that analytics database and that monthly progress, let's look at the easiest way to apply these skips to a, a wide swath of dates. Let's say every single Saturday and Sunday, we do not want to include maybe habits one and three. If you have this weekday formula here, it's pretty simple. What we can do is create a filter really quickly. Go down to filter and just say where weekday contains Saturday or Sunday. Of course, these would be unchecked. Let's just copy one cell, drag down an entire column and paste it in. And then we can just take away these filters and go back to the original database view. There you go. And then of course you can hide this skip column. Going into one of these habit tracker cards, January 1st, I want to convert progress to a number. I don't want to have it be a, a percentage because working with a roll up in the way of percentages can get tricky sometimes. I don't know if it's a bug from Notion side or something else, but we do have to translate that to a number back to the original page and go into this monthly analytics. Let's go to January. Now, as for this month progress bar, we're not gonna create that here. This is a lot, but this is translated from my date progress template. This gives us basically the monthly progress from right now today. So of course, January will say 100% because I'm filming in May. And we have a select property here to determine what quarter this month is in. I just like the way board view looks. And we go back to this front page. You can see each one is tucked under their corresponding quarter. I also have a relation going back to that habit tracker. So whenever you create a relation property to another database, coming down here to advanced, this is a property type. It will prompt you, first of all, to search for that database you want to connect to, which in this case was monthly analytics from my habit tracker. It will then create a backlink of sorts. So another relation inside of my monthly analytics, which is automatic and it automatically goes back to my daily journal habit tracker. I have every single date associated with January from that database right in here. Then what I did is I created a rollup property which is right under relation. If you go down to advanced, I went and I grabbed from the daily journal, from the relation coming back, I grabbed the progress and I grabbed the average of that progress. So this is from that progress column that I just translated from percentage to a number. Now, those two are gonna be really important for this star rating, which is pretty straightforward. Let's start with the plain stars and slice comma zero comma 10. And we're gonna say 10 times that habit progress roll up. Habit progress. Of course, this is a lot shorter than the formula we just did because we're not incorporating those skips. So now that we have this, let's add, first of all, add a space. And then I'm going to format around property progress so we can get that percentage and we'll clean that up. So plus the percentage sign. And to clean this up, let's just say round 100 times this and then just say divided by 100. See what this does. I wonder if I can just multiply this by 100. That looks about right. Let's see if anything got messed up in here. We have 78% in January, 83 in February, 100 in March, April 74, 75. That looks, they are whole numbers, so it looks good. But if the average is 100%, we want those golden stars. So let's just say if habit progress, so that roll up, if that equals one, which is 100%, let's put in those golden stars. 
otherwise, so comma, our false condition is going to be what we just made with the plain stars, and then we'll just close it out with the parentheses. Now let's go back and look at some scenarios where we're at 100%. Looks like March is at 100% and we get those golden stars. So what I did here in this database view, I went to properties and I can just toggle on and off everything that I want to see. I have the star rating at the top here and the monthly progress. Now, as for this cover, if you're not aware, there are a few different ways that you can see an image as your little cover image here on a card. You can look at the page cover. At the top of the page, you can create a cover. You can have it be the page content, so the first image seen in the body of the page, or if you have a files and media property, upload the image to that property and choose that uh, property instead. And if you are duplicating this, what you can do is just erase this relation property and instead of relating to this habit tracker, just relate it to your own habit tracker. Of course, there is a roll up in here that's important that is rolling up from the habit tracker as well. So just go ahead and go into the configurations where need be and change things up for you. I always make sure to have chapters in these videos so you can just sort of come back and see what portions you need for your own needs. Let's just go right into the outro. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that this gave you some insight or at the very least some inspiration for your own habit tracker. Of course, this is not the only way to make a habit tracker inside of Notion. I wouldn't even say it's the best possible solution for habit tracking in general. I'm just trying to show you how you can enhance that original database that I showed you months and months ago in my original habit tracking video. I know that this was a comment I was getting a lot about skipping habits. I'll leave all the relevant links down below, including this template, of course, and other templates that I mentioned. Also, my icons and cover images from Gumroad. I'll give you guys a link down below for that as well. And that's pretty much it. I will see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next week with a new video. See you then.